List and describe the key prospecting activities that you must engage in on a consistent basis to ensure the appropriate balance of new customer development. Key activities. Telephone cold calls. Drop-in visits. Dash cold calls. Asking for the referrals. Networking at events. Calling on dormant accounts. Trade shows, social, virtual networking and use of social media, finding additional business within existing accounts, observations in your travels, retail locations, delivery trucks. The first objective in any new interaction is selling yourself. Here's a list of suggestions for improving your success ratio while making calls. Smile! Professional appearance. Be friendly and outgoing. Great attitude. Have some objectives in mind. Be ready to collect information. Pen and pad. Brush up on your product knowledge. Review any historical information that you have on the business or view their website. Learn the names of decision makers, key contacts, and the gatekeeper. Have business cards and sales literature. Prepare and make certain that you have relevant materials, product samples, and tools with you. What challenges do you face while attempting to uncover business opportunities? This aspect of professional sales is the most difficult and challenging part of the job for most people. In fact, if it wasn't for this aspect of the job, a higher percentage of people would likely be more interested in the profession. Here are some of the typical challenges that you are likely to encounter while engaged in prospecting activities. Voicemail or automated phone systems. Virtual receptionist. People who won't put your calls through if you don't have a proper contact name, but at the same time won't provide you with a name. The gatekeepers. People who won't return your calls. People who are honestly too busy running their business are rude or having a bad day and take it out on others. Decision makers or other contacts who are truly busy people and have other priorities. Outdated information and account records. People or companies that use privacy policies to hide behind and not provide names. Identifying the decision maker or decision making process already think they have enough supplies or they have a preferred supplier. Competitive loyalties. Bad experience with our company or a previous sales rep. Customer perception of your positioning in the marketplace. Having the time, making the time to engage in these activities due to many other responsibilities. Workload, dealing with customer issues, company reports, customer quotes, drive and travel time doesn't allow enough time for prospecting your own moods, attitudes, and personal mindset. If you are new to sales and you haven't already done so, you're encouraged to target current customers or dormant accounts for new business opportunities first. Based on statistic, this is the path of lesser resistance. It's been estimated that you have a one in two chance to get business from an existing account and a one in four chance to get business from an old account. When you're prospecting for new customers, the odds drop to 1 in 20. How do you keep yourself motivated to prospect and overcome the fear of rejection? Life and success in professional sales can often be solitary and lonely. The self-discipline and consistency required to achieve and maintain results separates mediocrity from high performance. It can be especially challenging when you're first getting started because you can be vulnerable and filled with self-doubt. Here are some suggestions for getting and staying motivated. Believe in it. It works. Sometimes you have to hang on to the belief of a more experienced and tenured individuals until you establish personal belief. Prepare yourself properly. Physical and mental preparation go hand in hand and work to your advantage. Discipline yourself. Protect yourself against yourself 
by forcing yourself to engage in the activities that you know are necessary to produce positive results. Convert that feeling of nervousness or apprehension into excitement and optimism. Don't take it personally. Put yourself in a place that forces you to build your mental toughness and learn to protect yourself from vulnerability. Partner with a buddy. If possible, team up with someone who is positive and optimistic, a person who can offer encouragement and even some friendly competition. Make the time to prospect. Don't accept any excuses from yourself. Add prospecting activities to your schedule and then follow through with them. Organize and prioritize your list of leads. Institute a prospect management system by leveraging tools and technology that are either provided or that you acquire. A business card is not a prospect. Don't fool yourself. A name or a business card does not become a prospect until you have engaged in a conversation or scheduled an appointment. Call decision makers only. Maximize the amount of time that you invest into contacts that have potential for return. All at once or not. In some industries, it is possible to focus a full day on phone calls and another day completely on appointments. If you have this option, determine what works best for you. Personally, I prefer to focus on one activity at a time because I tend to get into a groove and I'm able to build on successes. For that reason, whenever it has been possible, I will invest a full day or block of time on phone calls and a separate date on appointments in the field. Break up the day session. In this case, you are balancing activities in blocks of time. Use a headset. There's so many benefits to a headset. It frees up your hands for taking notes, even though you cannot be seen. It allows you to speak with hand gestures, and a headset improves your listening because it eliminates background noise and distractions. Hold all calls. If you know that focusing on prospecting calls is a challenge for you, then you can protect yourself by having all calls diverted to voicemail for a predetermined time period, unless it happens to be someone returning your prospecting call. Know that it's a numbers game. The degree of difficulty from industry to industry and the selling cycle time varies. No matter what the business is, success is inevitable. When you stay the course, it's only a matter of time. Build on the little successes. Leverage the positive emotion and resulting energy burst when you experience success. This is the best time to gain momentum by increasing your activities. Strengthen your mind and increase your tolerance level. It is especially important that you continue to increase your knowledge base and even more important that you maintain an optimistic and enthusiastic frame of mind. Reading and listening to positive and uplifting information is critically important, especially when you are just getting started. Challenge yourself or make it a competition. Set goals. Focus on the outcome and not on the effort. Visualize yourself achieving success. Capture and cling on to how you will feel when you accomplish your objectives. Reward yourself. Even if it's something small, this is an excellent way to recognize your personal victory. Inexperienced or rookie sales representatives often set unreasonable expectations regarding prospecting. These expectations ultimately lead to frustration, disappointment, and defeat. In order to protect yourself emotionally, what expectations should you set for yourself? Ralph Waldo Emerson said, The chief cause of disappointment is expectation. It is not uncommon for salespeople, especially those who are just getting started, to set unreasonable expectations regarding prospecting. Mentally, you need to be in it for the long haul, and for that reason, it is important to keep in mind that 
Prospecting takes effort, requires consistent activity, and sometimes you will expend a great deal of energy where little or no immediate results are apparent. Almost all prospects will not return your phone calls, and it will be difficult and challenging to get in to see people. You will encounter resistance to your product, service, ideas, and concepts. It can be an emotional roller coaster, and you have to learn to enjoy the ride. Sometimes you will feel unappreciated and alone, and that is okay. If there is a recognized need for what you do in society or business, you believe in what you do and have faith, then it is only a matter of time before you encounter success. You must be open-minded, willing, and prepared to try new ideas and approaches. Whether you're alone on the phone or in a customer's office and you've placed yourself in the path of opportunity, it is during these quiet moments of persistence, tenacity, and resilience that you achieve victory. There won't be a parade. You won't hear a thunderous band playing. Remember, greatness is caused when there is no applause. Learning Spotlight Number 2 It's time to review what we've covered so far. Each question in the quiz has a 90-second time limit, and the quiz has a 15-minute time limit. You cannot pause the quiz once you begin. The quiz includes many types of questions including true or false, drag and drop, multiple answers, and etc. Read the questions carefully, and make sure you understand what is being asked before submitting your response. Many of the questions or variations of them will be included in the final exam. You will be graded, and the passing grade for the quiz is 70%. You will have three chances to attain a passing grade. If you fail to attain a passing grade after three attempts, you will be locked out of the course. You will have an opportunity to review the quiz responses upon successful completion. If you wish to review the previous slides and sections, do so before advancing. Upon completion of the quiz, please click on the green Next button with the white arrow in order to advance to the next step in the learning path. This concludes step number four of the learning path. Please click on the green next button with the white arrow in order to advance when you are ready to proceed.